Hi, in this session I'm going to show you how to use the NPV function in Excel. NPV means net present value. So in a nutshell, what NPV does, it allows you to analyze an investment uh, and some cash flows that that investment will generate in maybe a, a period of years or months and take a look at the value, the present value of that investment based on some kind of interest rate some, or some kind of discount rate. So to give a little bit more color or more background in 10BV, let me go and do a little presentation first to kind of cover it and an example. And then we'll go back into how we can calculate that in Excel. So here's a little brief overview of NPV. Now according to different web sources, Wikipedia and Vestopedia, uh, NPV, which is again net present value, is a time series of cash flows, incoming and outgoing, that's defined, that's defined as its sum of present values of individual cash flows of the same entity. And then Vestopedia gives a little bit more concise definition saying that it compares the value of a dollar today, today to the value of the same dollar in the future, taking in inflation returns of that account. And so again, in a nutshell, what we're trying to do is we're, gonna, we're trying to figure out if we invest some money into a project or a product and we are able to know in the future how much it's going to bring in for time periods, yearly or monthly, we can look at the value of that particular investment based on some kind of discount rate. The way NPV is calculated, I'll show you this little calculation here. Uh, this is one of the ways that it's shown that NPV is calculated. Now when we look at this particular calculation, we can just deconstruct it in the following. We've got our total number of peers, that, that's a bit that's the capital T. So let's say, for example, we have a five-year time period. That's the total number of periods, five years. C the capital C is the cash flow. How many years is it bringing in money? Um, the, T, the lowercase t under the C is that time period. The first year that cash flow is bringing in X amount of dollars. The second year, third year, fourth year, fifth year, etc. The R is the discount rate. So that is the rate that we're using to discount those cash flows. So it's usually a percentage. Now there's some considerations we need to take into with calculating NPV. Now it's usually an estimate of the timely future cash flows. It, in a perfect world, that's, we can uh, calculate at year one, year two, year three, how much cash flow is, are we going to get from a particular project. Well in the real world, we're estimating. That's really a, a difficult thing to do because we're kind of trying to foretell the future. So it's going to be an estimate. Now, NPV doesn't factor in any cash outlays. So say, for example, in X, the third year, we might add, need to do some maintenance. So we would have to take the expense of that minus out of that cash flow to get a net cash flow for that year. Now, the future net cash flows generally occur also at the same time. Uh, they occur yearly on the same date. So it can either occur yearly or monthly and has to go beginning of the I beginning of that period or end of that period. So it can't be like something where in one year it's going to be in the e beginning of the period, in the second year, third year it's going to be the end of the period, and the fourth year will be at the beginning of the period. The assumption that it's going to occur at the same time, and either yearly, monthly, or beginning or ending of that period. Now the discount rate is something that needs to really be carefully considered. Uh, it's something that is used to convert the value of those expected cash flows to the present value. So the discount rate is something that is also a little bit more subjective. You can go really conservative and say, you know, if I invested my money in a money market account or some CDs or maybe very safe gov government bonds, we would use that rate. Or if you want to be a little bit more uh, aggressive, maybe a little more high yield type of commercial bonds, that may be something that you'd say, oh, well, I'm, I'm willing to take a little bit more risk to put my money in. So the, the discount rate is something that you would kind of need to play around and come to an idea what you would use, where would you, if you would put your money into some kind of investment rather than putting into a project. So that becomes a little bit more subjective. So in, in the end result, how do we determine if the NPV is good or bad? Well, if the NPV is less than zero, that usually means it's bad. It's not a good uh, use of your money to put into this project. If it's greater than zero, usually it's good. And if equals zero, that means it's a break-even type of scenario. So let's look at an example. Let's say we decide to invest $100 in a lemon stand at the beginning of the year. There's the equipment that we have, this, this juicer. And the discount rate we're deciding to use is 5%, maybe a good bond index fund. And we're expected to run the stand for five years. And the yearly cash flow 
at the end of the, each year, we're expecting to get $200 back. Um, however, at the third year, there is a cash flow outlay. So there's a $100 maintenance cost on the third year for that particular uh, juicer or that particular equipment that we need. So with this in mind, this is how it would work. So we have our NPV formula, and we have our table listing from year one to year five and the initial cost at the end. So this is what it would look like if we de deconstructed the formula and broke it down per year. You would have the cash flow for that time period, year one, over one plus the interest rate to the power of that year. And if we took our example of the lemonade stand and calculated the real numbers in here, we would get this. So we had 200 in the first year, 200 in the second year. We have our maintenance, which, shall, which minuses off $100 from that $200 from the third year. And after that, years four and five, would have the same $200 cash inflows. At the end here, we see we need to subtract off the initial cost at $100 to get us up and running. So if we put those numbers into the calculation, this is what we would get. And our value of this investment would be about $680. So this is definitely uh, greater than zero. So this would mean that, hey, this is a good investment. The, the net present value is positive. So how do we perform these calculations in Excel? Well, let me, let's go back into the Excel application. So here we're back into Excel, and we see that we have our table that lists out the, the rate, 5%, our initial cost at 100, and our flows for the year. So flow 1, 2, 3, and 4, these are at the end of the period, and you see flow 3, we indicate that we only have $100 because we're minusing $100 for expense. And here is our net present value. This is the, the calculation you see in the formula here. So I'll go ahead and perform it here. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and go into the cell here. Press equal, NPV. You can see now it's selected that function here. I'm gonna go ahead and double click that. And it'll add that open parentheses. The rate I'm gonna use here is up here. Click on that cell, which is B1, comma, and then it, my first value. So since I've had the values listed out here, I can just go ahead and select that cell and drag it and select the range of cells there. So those are my values. And then I'm gonna close it with a closing parentheses. And now I'm going to add in that initial cost. So that initial cost was minus 100 so because it's coming out of our pockets. So it's an outflow. Click on that, press enter, and here you'll see 679.51. So I'll let me round it off. And then you'd have $680. So that's our NPV. Now this is with the assumption that the flows are coming at the end of the period. However, if they are at the beginning of the period, let me move this comment over here. If they're at the beginning of the period, we really don't include the first flow. So this is how we would do something if it comes at the beginning of the period. In this example, what we can, what may happen is we have, we invested our money into a lemonade stand, and then we would subcontract someone out to host the lemonade stand, and they would say they're going to give us a set amount of money each year at the beginning of the, each year and whatever they make they're going to keep right so basically this is a scenario where this might happen so in this case we can't include the uh, beginning flows here because in a way this is part this won't be part of the calculation so what we need to do is put equal NPV and we have our rate here and the first values are these values. We're beginning with flow two to five. And then we close that, and then we're going to add the initial cost, plus we will add flow one, because that occurred in the beginning of the year. So that really, we're getting, we're, we're taking, we're minusing this money out at the beginning of the year, but also at the beginning of the year, we're getting $200. So we have to add it later on, outside of the NPV calculation. So once that happens, we have $718. Let me go ahead and round that up. So we have $718. So there's the example of how you can calculate NPV, uh, one for the end of the period, which is probably more common, and one for the beginning of the period. So I hope that helps. Thanks for watching.